But we know if we think from a long-term perspective and let the probabilities play out, the graphs are always continuously rising and going in the right direction. Hello everyone and welcome back to Statira Trading. It's now less than a week to our beta launch and we really want to push this video out because it is so important. So this episode is going to be the do's and don'ts when using an automated system. Now it's super important that you follow these if you're building your own system, going to be renting ours, or in fact if you have your own trading strategy that you trade manually. All of these points can apply to either one of those methods of trading. So hope you enjoy this episode and we will jump right into it. So first of all, we're gonna go through the do's. So number one, have a long-term mindset and let the probabilities play out. Now, what I mean by this is if we go back to our results video, you might remember this graph. Now, this is called a Monte Carlo analysis where we run 100 or more than 100 different simulations to see what the final outcome would be. And if we do remember, over a thousand trades, every single graph is slightly different. So yes, the statistics might show X, Y, and Z, but that might not be the case over the next thousand trades. But we know if we think from a long-term perspective and let the probabilities play out, the graphs are always continuously rising and going in the right direction. This is the benefit from long-term thinking and allowing our edge, our system to play out. Number two, use it to diversify your portfolio with other investments that are uncorrelated. So the reason we say use it to diversify your portfolio is I'll give you an example from our own algorithm. You can see that on this chart, there are two lines. You've got the green one, which indicates gold, and the orange one, which indicates US dollar, Japanese yen. We can see for a period of time, the orange crosses the green, and after that period, gold goes into a drawdown or stagnation, while US dollar yen is constantly going up. This is why we trade multiple different pairs, because if you just put all your eggs in one basket, say we just traded gold, you would go through probably over a year of drawdown. Whereas when we put the two together, it's a steady increase in equity graph. Now, we want you to use this system alongside other diversifications or other investments, such as real estate, stocks, bonds, or anything that you're invested in, because together you can create a bigger portfolio and it means that you can allow the probabilities to play out on each and every individual one. Because if they are uncorrelated and you're diversified in your portfolio, you can expect long-term growth. And number three, stick to a low risk plan and never over risk. The reason we tell you to stick to a low risk plan and never over risk is, say if you go and risk 2% per trade and you used our algorithm Sequenti. Now we know that we can go on a 12 to 13 loss streak. So say that that was 2% at 13 losses in a row. That would be 26% loss, right? And that's consecutive losses. The losses could keep coming over a longer period of time. So say we were down 30% uh, risking 2% per trade. That would mean that to get back that 30%, you'd need to make a 43% gain. So the difference is getting larger and larger the more drawdown we go in. So if we risk more, we can expect bigger drawdowns, which means we need to make far much more to get back to level zero. This is why we risk 0.3% per trade. And within our algorithm, it keeps our drawdown to between 10 and 11% meaning that you know, we need to gain almost the exact same as what we've lost to get back to zero. The, the reason we do this is you know, for that reason, but also to keep our account moving at a slow rate and in the right direction. We don't want too much volatility between the highs and the lows of our equity chart. 
And I don't think that you should either. If you want to be in the game long term, then please consider risking with a low risk plan, exactly like we do. Because as you can see from this graph, you know, if you're down 50%, you need to make a 100% gain. And to do that, people will start over risking or it will take you far much longer to get back, say if you risked a lot less. Yes, the overall gains might not be as big, but the difference between the drawdown and the, and the profit will be very well within anybody's psychological levels. Um, so say you were down 30%, psychologically you're going to think things are going wrong, when actually it could just be a case of you've over-risked. So please follow a low-risk plan and that will keep the longitude of your algorithm or if you're trading with us or your own trading strategy yourselves. So now we'll move on to the don'ts. Number one, don't look at your equity graph or account size in your broker every day. The reason we say don't look at the equity graph or the account size every day or even the day-to-day -day trades is when you do your testing or you look at the results, you don't actually look at what happens day in, day out. Because if you did, you would see from this statement of our algorithm, losses can come quite a lot and they can happen in quite a uh, irregular sequence. So you can see in this one, there's a lot of reds. But this is normal uh, within trading because you're not going to win every trade. And at the end of the day, like we've said before, if you think long term, you're thinking what happens over the next thousand trades or, you know, what happens over the next quarter. You should never look at what happens day in, day out. You know the statistics. You know there's an edge. Just look at it at, le it, at the most, at the least, sorry, um, every quarter. So we recommend looking every quarter and every like uh, half year because these will allow you to have a larger sample size and it will allow you to see if the edge is still there. Number two, don't close a trade down early just because it's in profit. So this would only happen if you are looking at the charts and looking at every individual trade day on day out. But this, uh, this goes hand in hand as to why you don't look at the charts every day and every hour. Because look at this graph here. We entered at the white line where the green arrow is up. Red represents our stop loss. Green represents our take profit. Now, let's say that you can see that we're moving up. We're in profit. We've got those four green bars. We're then hit with a red bar. So if you were looking at your profit, you would see that it's gone down. Now, this might put fear into people thinking they're going to miss out in the profits because nothing yet is locked in. So they cut that trade there. And straight away, after they've cut out that trade, it then goes up again and hits their take profit. Now, yes, you might have taken some profits, but if the system that you create, or if you were to cut a trade short using our algorithm, that's only going to mess up the probabilities and the outcome in the long term. Because again, we, some, we, we let our winners run and we cut our losses short. So in this case, the person would have cut their winners short. Cutting your winner short can seriously have a bad implementation long term if you're wanting to grow the account and you need those big returns to keep the account going. So please, if you have a system that has statistics, never cut the trade short, zoom out, look at your results over the longer period and just continue using those rules and do not break them. And number three, do not increase position sizing just because you're in a drawdown. Similar to a game of roulette, whatever red, black, the numbers, we don't know what order and what sequence they're going to come in. Yes, we can apply a strategy to make percentage gain long term, but the sequence we don't know about. And sometimes people think that they can increase the position size because they're on a bit of a losing streak. Well, we don't know how long that losing streak will go on for. And over-risking, increasing the position size while you're in a losing streak 
could only dig yourself in a deeper hole. So this is exactly why we say stick to the same position sizing, keep the risk low and just keep everything consistent. Because again, when you've done your testing or when we've done our testing on our own algorithm, we never increase position size just because we're in a bit of drawdown. Because if you do that, then it's just going to increase the overall drawdowns and dig yourself in a deeper hole, like I said earlier. So there's three do's and don'ts for when using automated systems or renting a system or applying it to your own trading itself. All are very important. And if you stick to them, you've got a higher chance of long-term success. Now, we are now just less than a week away to our beta launch. We will be launching on the 28th of February. So if you're interested in renting our system, then please head to our website, www.statiratrading.com and sign up to the uh, beta launch. Now, if you're not sure if it's right for you, we have previous episodes on an EA assessment sheet to see if you're the right fit. Please go ahead, download that, and it will tell you whether you're the right fit. Now, again, if you enjoyed this episode, please give the, ch give the video a like and subscribe for more. And without ado, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.